Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to this Astro Chat episode where we will troubleshoot a difficult Saturn. And these are my top five remedies for a difficult Saturn. So this is if your Saturn is either too weak or too strong. We'll take a look across the spectrum. What can you do to improve your Saturn? And I'll tell you what some of the symptoms are of a weak Saturn. Okay, so how do you know if you've got a weak Saturn? Well, you could look and study the placement. So, you know, for example, a Saturn in Aries in the first house, if the Digbala isn't good, if the Ishtkashtvala isn't good. Um, we can also take a look at, you know, conjunctions, aspects, these are some of the things I'd be taking a look at. I'd also be looking at your Saturn across your divisional charts. Okay, so there's lots of things I would look at. But you will know if you've got a weak Saturn, if you have these symptoms. So I'll give you three example symptoms. Number one is you might lack discipline. Okay. The second one is that you might not feel motivated. Right. Uh, and another symptom of a weak Saturn is that you could be absolutely terrible with time. Okay, perhaps you are always running late, okay, but that could be a symptom of Saturn being too strong. And I'll give you an example of that. I know Karl Lagerfeld, he always used to run late for appointments and he ran late for every appointment because he was working so much. So he was working too hard, okay, and that is one of the symptoms of when Saturn is too strong. Okay, so when Saturn is too strong, and now an example of that could be, you know, I might see Saturn in Libra in the seventh house, or a Saturn in Shasha Mahapurush Yoga somewhere, or something along those lines, then I'll see a very strong Saturn. And this is a person who doesn't know how to rest. Okay, they're working too much. They might be a workaholic, they're working all the time. This is a person who could also experience a lot of delays in life. Okay, so if you keep experiencing delay after delay after delay, your Saturn might be quite strong. I know I've experienced a lot of delays, so many projects of mine and things that I want to do and, you know, ends up being a year later, I end up doing it. That happens to me all the time. Uh, another example of Saturn being too strong is can be perhaps that you aren't so lighthearted. You know, maybe you're serious all the time and only focused on work, only focused on making money, only focused on security. Could be a bit of a control freak. That could be another thing that could be there if your Saturn is far too strong. I think, I'm pretty sure it's Keanu Reeves, if I'm not mistaken, he's got quite a strong Saturn. And I think, you know, and I'd have to look at all the other placements and planets as well, but I think he's quite a serious character, isn't he? <clears throat> so let's take a look at some remedies. Let's take a look at, well, what can we do? What can we do to improve if our Saturn is either under-functioning, over-functioning, perhaps it's weak, perhaps it's strong. And look, as I say, you could have some elements of it being too strong and at the same time, some elements of it being too weak as well. So... Let's take a look at the remedies. And these are just good generally to know anyway. So my top tip number one is polish your skills. Saturn gives a delay. When he gives you a delay of time, he's gifting you time. Okay, he's gifting you all this time. See it as something luxurious. See it as something abundant. See it that you've been given all this time to polish your skills. Saturn wants you to polish your skills, rework, do it again, you know, make a practice video instead of making the real video, right? And then who knows, maybe your practice video is, is good enough to publish. Um, this is that kind of thing of do a, do a first draft badly, okay? So do it and then do it again and then do it better and then do it even better. Saturn loves that you spend that extra time polishing your skills, he's kind of wanting you to become head and shoulders above the competition. He wants you to be better. He will hold you back and he will let you go forward when you are absolutely excellent. Okay, so never see the delay or the restriction as a bad thing. He's getting you really good at what it is that you're doing. Okay, so I've got here, reread the same book a thousand times rather than read thousands of books on one subject. 
And I've got my uh, beautiful copy of Nakshatras by Camilla Sutton. This is one of my favorite books, as is um, Light on Life, Heart to Foe, Roberts for Boda. And but I just wanted to show you that this is quite a dog-eared book now. And I've got all these little tags and I refer to this several times a day. So yeah, and I still haven't memorized it, you know, <laughs> but maybe one day I will. So I've got the note here, make your books dog-eared. Okay, do the same thing repetitively and truly master it. All right, top tip number two, work for free. This is slightly unusual, but working for free. This is a really good thing to do, especially if you are starting a business or you're new to some profession and you want to build your portfolio, you want to build your client cases, you want to show experience, work for free. And that way you can get your profession started in that new line. This is also a thing of doing more with less. Okay, so I was almost gonna call this one halve your budget. You know, uh, see if you can still achieve your outcome with less money than you think you need. You'd be amazed. So many people say, oh, I want to make a film, but I don't have the budget. And it's like, but we have access to iPhones and iMovie, for example, right? Which is just so incredible, which they didn't have, you know, 30 years ago and they were making films like Star Wars. I said, I never understand why is it that people need such a big budget to make a film these days? Because we've got such amazing technology that you can do so much with you know and really you should be working more on the idea than on the execution because a good idea can afford poor execution right so work more on your ideas work for free have the budget have the budget in your mind realize that you need less than what you think you need to achieve what it is that you want the other thing that you can do as well, if you're starting a business, you can work a little bit less than what you're worth or what others are charging in the marketplace. That way you'll be able to build your business and get it going. Um, and the other thing that I really like here, I've got the note here, always do some extra work for people. Give people the baker's dozen. So, you know, do extra, a little bit extra for free. People will remember you forever and that is one of my top tips. Top tip number three, plan and commit. Okay, what have we got here? We've got a few things going on in here. Plan and commit. Saturn is all about structure. He wants you to structure things. So when you devise a plan, you can do this in so many different ways. You can get out a spreadsheet, you can get out a big sheet of paper and do a mind map. And I'll put up a couple of pictures of mind maps to show you how amazing they are. Mind maps are brilliant. You have these little bu bubbles and you create a structure and within each bubble you make sure that you know no more than uh, kind of five words and no less than two words. You set a little rule, two to five words within each bubble kind of thing. Because what you're wanting to do is you're just wanting to create a structure. You're wanting to create kind of the big picture and then you can drill into each area and flesh it out further. The other thing that's in this top tip, so plan, be strategic, come up with the big picture scheme, right? And then commit. How do you commit? You set a deadline. Okay, Saturn loves us to set firm, proper deadlines put a date, put a date in the diary and don't worry if you miss it, okay? But make sure you commit. That's really, really important. Top tip number four, increase or decrease responsibility. Saturn is a planet of responsibility. He wants us to take responsibility, firstly for our own lives and then if we're in a position later, he wants us to serve humanity and to help other people, okay? To help lift other people out of their problems. That's very ideal for Saturn. But in order to do this, we do have to look after our physical selves first. Okay, so sometimes for some of you, it might be that you need to decrease responsibility because maybe you've bitten off more than you can chew or you've got too many projects going on, there's too much work and it's impacting your physical body. 
You need to decrease responsibility. You need to do less. You need to figure out which are the most important projects and just do those and park the rest, right? So one of the things here in this top tip is all about finding the optimal level of busy. Now let's say for example, I schedule in my system, I say, okay, I've got one spot for a reading every Friday and that's it. Now that would be a disaster for me because then I'd spend the whole week preparing for that one reading on the Friday and then and I wouldn't do anything else and I wouldn't make any videos and I wouldn't do anything. So how I've got my structure set up is that, you know, my bookings come in mainly it's Tuesday, Wednesday, I have time to prepare. Then I've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to do videos and other things and like this, you know, I'm able to keep myself the right level of busy so that I'm not doing too much on a particular task. Another thing you can do, I was experimenting with this today, is every now and then just check in with what I'm doing and say, am I spending the right amount of time? Am I spending too much time on this task? That's it, that was the question. I keep asking myself, am I spending too much time on this task? And that just wakes me up and go, oh yeah, okay, I better crack on because I've got so many other things to do. So that's a good one. Am I spending too much time on this task? Keep asking yourself that, keep checking in. Uh, I think a rule of thumb with Saturn is you want to be, yeah, this, I've got a couple of things written here. So one of them is you want to work one to four hours of high quality work per day, okay? And that is, I've checked this out with so many different people. I've checked this out with authors. One of my friends who's a surgeon, he said the same. He said, I've only got four, hours of high quality work in me per day, um, which I found a little bit worrying because if he's in a six hour surgery, that's like, well, but I know what he means. Like, yeah, it's, it's rule of thumb is you've got about four, quali four hours of high quality work in, in you per day maximum. I've heard this from a lot of people. The other phrase I wanted to share with you was this. Someone once said, when you want something done, give it to a busy person. And I love that phrase because it shows that like, when the machine is going, you spit something in, it gets spat out much faster. So I really like that phrase as well to help you figure out, you know, okay, what's my optimal level of busy? Top tip number five. This is a really simple one and it is wear a watch and that's it. Wear a watch. Isn't that an incredibly simple tip? But that is all about, and that's not using your iPhone or your computer or whatever it is. This is an old school, you know, it's got cogs in it and all that kind of thing. A proper old school watch. Wear a watch as a satin remedy. This is a really interesting one. This will keep you focused on time. This is a tip actually that Kathy O'Brien gives in her book, PTSD Time to Heal. This was one of the ways that she healed her post-traumatic stress disorder, right? She had a lot of trauma she had to clear and she said that wearing a watch every day was something that really helped her to just be grounded, be present, and yeah, and to not drain time away or lose time. Saturn wants you to value your time, okay? So the other thing you can do with this tip is also be conscious of how you talk about time. Never say that you wanna kill time. That's not a good idea. Saturn would hate that. He'd be like, what? I've given you time, you know, cherish it kind of thing. Um, the other thing I like here as well, I've got the quote, I think this comes from Dr. Phil. It's a bit cheesy, but he says, people who get bored are boring. I agree with that. I think because there's always stuff to do. There's always something to learn. There's always something to make. There's always something, you know, to learn or grow or, you know, there's, there's always stuff going on. So yeah, that's an important top tip. And very quickly, I'm going to give you one last bonus top tip. I, do you know, there were several, there are like 10 for Saturn, but these are my top ones. But this bonus tip is simply clean your room. And it's a little bit Jordan Peterson, I know, but it's very important. Saturn would love for you to clean your environment every Saturday if you can, okay? Make Saturday your cleaning day and tell yourself, this is what I do when, you know, I have to clean the bathroom or something. I say, oh, it's going to take 15 minutes. And then I get started and maybe half an hour later I finish, but it's done, right? So clean your room, clean your environment, clean everything on a Saturday as a way of honoring the beautiful planet Shani 
honoring Saturn. And of course you can wear dark blue as well. He loves that kind of thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Stick around with this series. It's going to be so much fun. The next one we're going to do is Jupiter. Then we're going to do Mars. Then we're going to do Moon. Then we're going to do Venus, Mercury, Sun, Rahu Ketu. I might even do one for Earth. Who knows? But stick around with this series. I hope you like it. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.